Let's talk about how we can make a tank using Godot's built-in vehicle body now that's with individual rowing wheels, tracks, and most importantly, it turns like a tank in place with one track going one way and the other going the other way. Let's talk about what we're going to need here before we can start working on the tank scene. First and foremost, a tank model. I got mine from TurboSquid, link in the description, but beyond just a tank model, all of the components like wheels and tracks that need to move individually have to be their own meshes. The tracks 1 and 2 need to have separate textures from the rest of the tank because we create an illusion of movement in the tracks by moving that texture. And finally, the origins of the wheel meshes need to be at the center of the mesh, and you can tell if it is by selecting each wheel and looking at where the movement gimbals are coming from. If they're coming from the center of the wheel like this, you're good. If not, it's an easy fix in Blender, and I had to do it for this model, so let me show you. Opening up Blender, we want to press A and then delete on all of the starting objects, and then import the model that we want to fix. Select its file type, and find it in your file manager to load it up. Looking through all of the meshes, Blender shows their origin with a small yellow dot that's probably hard to see on video, but the way to move it to the center of the mesh is by selecting the mesh in the list on the right, and then right-clicking on it on the screen and selecting Set Origin, Origin to Geometry. This moves the yellow dot to the center of our object, and we basically want to repeat it for all of the wheels. You probably want to do the same for the tank turret, but this video focuses on tank movement, so we won't worry about that. Once you're done with all the wheels, export the model to your preferred format, and let's get back into Godot. We'll start cleaning up the naming and structure here a little bit before we set up the full vehicle body. You'll notice there are a couple of extra nodes that were created on import. This is because Godot read the name of the mesh that said pseudo wheel and automatically created vehicle wheel nodes for them. I'm not exactly sure why the rest of the wheels didn't get their own nodes like that, but let's get rid of these because they are not supposed to be real wheels. After that, we're going to select all of the mesh nodes and move them out of the container node. We're not going to need this node, so let's get rid of it and then change the type of the root node to vehicle body. Let's rename the tank tread nodes to left tread and right tread. Finally, let's move all of the meshes that are going to be stationary under the body mesh just to keep things organized. Now there are a couple of things that our vehicle body node is missing to work properly. First up is vehicle wheels because that's what's going to apply forces to move the tank. And the way that we're going to set this up is for each wheel mesh we're going to add a vehicle wheel as a child. This is because we want the wheel to inherit the position of the mesh first and then we can move the wheel back up to be the parent of the mesh. We're also going to separate the naming of the wheel by whether they are on the left side or the right side. This is because we're going to want to access their parameters and code later. A little tedious, but by the end of it, you should have something like this. So now let's quickly save the scene and then add the textures in. For that, we want to open up the mesh, surface zero, and then find the albedo settings and the material to drag the texture in. And as long as the scene is saved, you should have access to all of this, but you might need to make the mesh and the material unique first in case these options are grayed out. We kind of lucked out here because a lot of these materials are properly shared in the model, so we didn't have to go through every single mesh. The last bit of node setup that we're going to do here is add a collision shape to our tank. We're going to go for a simple box here for the purposes of the tutorial, but a custom polygon would probably be best and wouldn't take much longer. So now we can go ahead and start working on the vehicle body and vehicle wheel parameters. There are a lot of different settings for these and I cover them more in depth in my car tutorial video if you want to check that out after the fact. In this tutorial, I'm just going to go over the ones that make our tank work. Starting off with mass, I raise it to 1000, but if you want to be more in line with a real Sherman tank, that would be 30,000, but scale the engine power accordingly. Next up is movement dampening. This is what's going to slow down our vehicle once we let go off the movement buttons, and we want this really high up on a tank because once the throttle is off, it's supposed to stop very fast. So set this to 0.9. That high of a dampening is going to mess with the gravity, so we're going to raise the gravity scale to 3, which is also going to help us keep grip with the ground. Now let's work on the wheel settings, but before we can do that, we need to fix the fact that we can't see the wheel circles, and that has to do with them inheriting the scaling from the meshes. When we reset the scale on the wheels, 
the meshes get giant now, so we have to select all of the meshes and change the scaling back to 0.025 for them. Now we can see the wheel gimbals, but they are not facing the right way. So go through the same process again and reset the rotation for the wheels and then transfer that rotation onto the wheel meshes. At this point, we can select all of the wheels and go into the wheel settings. We're going to start off with the radius and we'll increase this to 0.7. Although this makes our wheels larger than their actual size, we want this wheel radius to cover the tank treads as well. That way the treads won't go underground when the tank is moving. Next, in the suspension settings, we'll increase the stiffness to 30 so our wheels don't sag as much. And as the last thing before we move on to the code, we'll add a quick camera. Move it to where we want it so we can see the wheels and the treads as we work on them. And before we get started on the code, let's just quickly drop the tank in our scene to make sure that everything works properly so far. Which it looks like it doesn't because our tank sinks into the ground. That means we are going to have to make our collision shape go lower, which makes the tank work better. So let's get started on the code. We are going to attach a script to the tank scene and in the code we'll start off with a constant for the engine power of our tank and then some on ready variables for the nodes that we're going to use and vehicle body nodes we have the ability to apply engine power to all of the wheels at the same time however when the tank turns the left and right wheels need to move in opposite directions, so we need to apply engine power to each wheel individually. That's why here we're going to put all of the left wheels in one array and all of the right wheels in another array. That way whenever we need to apply engine power to either side, we can just loop through the arrays. After that, we need on ready variables for the treads because we're going to be editing their material when the tank moves. In the ready function, we are going to set the mouse mode to captured to make sure that we can't see the cursor and game. Now let's get to the good stuff. In the physics process, we are first going to figure out which way the player wants to move. So we'll get the axis of movement on our right and left keys, and then our down and up keys. This will return one if the player presses the left key, negative one if he presses the right key, and then zero if he presses neither or both. So now let's write the steering and driving code. If our steer axis is not zero, then we want to steer, and otherwise we don't. So let's start with the case of when we don't want to steer because that's a little easier. Here we are going to loop through all of our wheels by creating two for loops and set the engine force of each wheel to engine power times move direction. This will essentially apply forces to each of the wheels in the direction that we want them to go. The logic for turning is very similar except we want one of the sets of the wheels to move backwards. So if we want to turn left, we want the left set of wheels to move back and the right set of wheels to move forward. So we set the engine force on the left wheels to engine power times negative steer and on the right wheels to engine power times positive steer. The final thing that we need to do to make our turning setup work is change one of the settings on all of the wheels. So select all of them, go into the wheel settings and change row influence to one. Without it, the turning speed of the tank would be very, very slow. Matter of fact, when we try it out, it's still a little slow. So we're going to double our engine power for just when we're turning. Not exactly the most realistic way of dealing with the problem, but if it works, it works. So now let's make sure that our treads look like they're moving as well. We're going to do this by first getting the active material on the tread and accessing its UV offset parameter. We'll basically use this to move the texture on the tread. To decide the amount that we're moving the tread by, we'll just take the RPM or rotations per minute of one of the wheels and multiply it by a vector three with everything but the X component being zero. This will ensure that our texture is only moving on one axis. Technically, it's cleaner to just have this bit of code after the if else statement, but I find it more visually appealing to have the treads move faster when the tank is turning. Now quickly make sure that the right tread is looking at the right wheel for its movement and let's take a look at this in game. Now we can turn in place, we can move forward and back 
and our tracks look like they are moving with the wheels. The main thing missing from this tank movement script is an ability to turn and move forward at the same time. To implement that, we are going to add another section at the top of our if else statement that checks if we are pressing both a movement key and a steering key. And here we can just copy paste the code block from when we are moving forward and back and make some changes to it. Specifically, instead of just multiplying the engine power by the move direction, we will multiply it by the move direction minus steer on the left wheels and plus steer on the right wheels. This will give us the ability to do a wide turn on the tank, but it also creates a slight problem for us. The treads now go under the ground because of the amount of force that's pushing on some of the wheels. To combat that, we can select all of the wheels, go into the suspension settings, and change the stiffness to 50. And with that, we can do proper wide turns without the treads freaking out at us, and our tank movement is complete. As always, if you want to save yourself some time, you can find all of the source code and project files on my Patreon at the link in the description. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.